and we are live hello Yay. ladies across the world Hi. we have cindy down there in australia Yay. you're at the bottom of the screen so that's quite appropriate because you're down there in australia and yeah, across I'm there we have sammy in the uk here how are you both you all right this morning yeah, thank you good, good. morning great thanks well this is this is uh what i've called our thursday threesome today <laughs> <laughs> because um it's great because I have now been officially invited to join the Bloom's International Online Art Show next week, and I'm really excited about it. Up until now, I've just been reception man. I've been your Bosley, haven't I? Yeah. Um, in reception, guiding people around. But um, I think I must have done a good enough job because I've been allocated my own room to show my art, my lamps. So, of course, this is all about this wonderful anniversary show of the Bloom's Arts House International Online Art Show next week. That's the 24th and 25th of September. That's the Friday at 7 p.m. and the Saturday at 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. And these are all, of course, UK times. So wherever you are in the world, work it out. We are GMT plus one at the moment, Sam, aren't we? Yeah. Yeah, we change at the end of this month to confuse the whole world, of course. So the idea of these chats is that um, we just get to know some of the artists um and today we've got sammy hexter andrews and the abstract artist and we've got the animal watercolorist down in australia we have cindy so where do we start girls this, this is new to me i've never done a threesome like this before i mean <laughs> with artists no no can we can we forget that i've never had a three-way talking to two other artists before normally when i normally when i do my uh, sunday instagram it's just me and another person so um you're gonna have to try and shut me up a bit but um i think we'll we'll start with with them um, with sammy then um because when i first learned about the blooms uh when steph and the other load of you started it up my thoughts about art i was very sort of pigeonholed with my art i thought i knew i thought i knew what i liked and abstract art i'm sorry about this was always on the periphery i didn't really get it and that was, I found that was because people had never really explained their process when you see a piece of abstract art. And then, of course, I discovered you and your art and the way that you do it. And of course, now I'm, I'm, a, I'm a convert because <laughs> the way that you explain about your abstract art, the way that you write your stories. So when did it start for you then doing this? Oh, my goodness. Um, I've always been in love with abstract art because I love the way that it was um, so different and, and you could see um, so many things in one painting. <clears throat> and But it gave you the opportunity to, I suppose, like, um, like dream in, in that painting and fall into that it painting. Is, it is very much like dreamscapes, aren't they? Because there's lots going on. Yeah, so I... Um, so I've always had that passion around abstract art and looking at other artists and everything. But then for me, my process is very different to other abstract artists. It's like you say, I write beforehand. So I will write an essay um, before I even start painting. So in my essay, it will not only be the story about what I'm painting, but it will be the materials I'm going to use. It's going to be the brushes or the knives, the size of the knives or the brushes that I'm going to use. Um, because I need to have it all laid out for me. And sometimes I do preliminary um, drawings and paintings beforehand. But it's not so tight that um, I don't have the freedom to move with the piece and for the art to lead me and where I'm going within that piece of work. So do you know um, any other abstract artists that go about it the same way as you do? Or is it I don't. unique to you? But it's, it's certainly, so. as I said earlier, it certainly made me understand more about what I was looking at. And obviously, looking at your art now enable, and understanding what you do enables me when I see anybody's abstract art to think about it and view it in a different way. Yeah, I think it's um, for, for, for me and for my collectors, they like to have the, the essay with it. So... Um, they can have a better understanding of where I'm coming from. But it doesn't mean that that then um, stops them having their own story behind the piece. It, it doesn't stop them looking at it and, say, and saying what they see. 
it's just a, a another part to the um, piece that I'm delivering to them. So it gives them a bit more of me as the artist. So I'm giving them a bit more of myself. Yeah, a lot of people just buy the from, finished work. They buy from the artist. They like to get to know the artist. I suppose it's the same with you, Cindy, isn't it? The it's people so get Absolutely. to know you as an artist and they say, oh, that's a Cindy Porter piece over there and they know the way you work. Yeah. But, yeah, you, I mean, the, the essays you write, they're not short, are they? <laughs> I mean, no, no, it can be reams. Oh, has got nothing on you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it can be reams, but what I send away um, with my artwork is a shortened version of it so they don't have the complete work i mean it like i say it can go on forever but i will give them a, a crazy version of that essay um some some clients asked to buy the preliminary drawings as well right. so i mean that was down to you steve actually when you said look at these preliminary drawings what are you oh, doing yes. with them which and was I, said, well, I, I don't do anything with them yeah. Um, but now I will show when a buyer is buying a piece of work, I'll show them all the preliminary work and they'll say, well, can I have that as well? And they'll buy that too. Because that makes it almost 3D in effect because they can see how it started and the process of building up and they can read what you were writing about yeah. it. And the whole journey. Yeah, the whole journey. That's right. See why you used a, a knife. So what do you work in? What materials? So I work mainly in acrylics, but I do do mixed media. So at the moment, I'm working on a piece which is with slate. All right. So it's all slate chippings, but I'm going to be mix mixing it in with a medium. So it will actually hold onto the canvas. And um, yeah, so I a wide range of inks, um, oils, pastels, um, crayons, pencil. Yeah, quite a wide range because I don't want to be um restricted mm. and, and some people say that you know when they look at my portfolio they say well it looks like there's a couple of different artists there uh. and I sort of think for me that's my freedom that's that's my style is that I, I allow myself to have the freedom rather than reproducing the same style of painting over and over again just in different colors so for example this piece behind me that's it. That's one. It's there's never going to be another one. Oh, every one of yeah. yours has got to be a, a one off. Yeah. So I've got to ask where your inspiration for each piece comes. I mean, do you is it building up over a period of days or something you've seen in the news or or um, just and I think what, what can I do today? Yeah, no, for my last um series of work um that I previewed in the June Bloom show was actually my journal from 2020. So every month I wrote a journal and of everything that had happened that month of last year. And then I started painting from the extracts from my journal. Wow, I bet that, so, was, a, so I bet that, that was difficult in some ways, wasn't it? Because a lot went on last year, you know, probably not, yeah. we didn't go anywhere, but there was a lot going on around the world. And Absolutely. So you know, intense things as well. Absolutely. I mean, I have family in Australia. And so when the wildfires were happening there, it was, you know, it was very close to close to home, mm. you know. So with the, the isolation, with the pandemic and, you know, all of that is was in that work. But when you look at the work, some pieces, um, it's not all um, miserable. No, no, the, the, there's sort of hope in there and, yeah, yeah I, th yeah. I think so, that's... And, and then other, other um, areas I get my inspiration from is I love to travel. So pre-COVID, I had a, a whole a series on Paris. I had a whole, a whole series on my travels when I went around America. Mm. So, yeah, I do take, I, I take um, inspiration from what I'm actually involved in rather than just thinking off the top of my head. Because wasn't the Paris one where you did the architecture? Was was that the? Yeah. Yeah, that, that that was I think the first one of yours that I saw that I really got that I could understand when I read the piece about it. I could understand what you and that's when I looked at more of your stuff and then instantly it's as though you open the door and oh yes of course I get it now, I get it I get what you're doing and, and that yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I 
I love I love your the way that you create your work, Tammy. With starting with the with the stories first, with the essay first, and and working through that way, it's just it it when I when I heard about that, it just made all your work so much more powerful for me. Like, oh, it, thank you. It, yeah, it was amazing. Um, yeah, it's an amazing way to work. Because art, yeah. art in general is a very powerful thing, isn't it? Art can yeah. make such a powerful statement because it's from the individual. And, you know, okay, it might only be a two-foot square piece of canvas, but you can convey so much in there and it can reduce people to tears or to joy. You know? mm. That's the thing with, with art. And that's what I've learned over the last year or two. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> the piece of wildlife just joined us. Henry. Stop him, jump up, and so what happens? He he goes. Yeah, you quick. can't stop them. You can't stop them. He's very vocal, isn't he? He is a very noisy boy, Henry. Bless him. And a Bless big him. boy. Otherwise, you're going to get kicked out, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, what are you doing at the moment, then, um, Sammy? What you, what can we expect to see from you next week? Uh, oh, next week. I mean, I I have I don't have any new pieces finished because I'm I'm building more on my collage work at the moment, so they take a bit of time. But um, I will be showing a selection of a couple of different series that I've done, so that'll be yeah. on my show reel. Do you do commissions yeah. then, for people? As well? I do do commissions. How does that yeah. work? How, I mean, I always <laughs> thought with uh, with abstract, how do people commission an abstract piece? Usually people go and look on my website first and they, they see different styles. And straight away I tell them I do not reproduce a piece that I've already done in a different colour to match your sofa. <laughs> so I don't do that. I um, should match your sofa. But what they do do is they'll come to me and they'll say, you know, um, I really like this piece of music. Can you paint that? Oh, I see. So yeah. I will listen to that piece of music over and over again. That's I will it. listen to other pieces of work by that same artist. I will, in one case, I um, actually printed off the manuscript and I painted on top of the manuscript. So it was in that piece. Wow. So, so yeah. There, there's, so could as, you as still well, see the, the notes behind it then in, in that? Yeah. Wow. That's yeah. that's good. I n I never thought about that painting a piece of music. It just didn't didn't. Yeah, I mean, people will come to me with um, they'll say this is what I like, and they'll tell me a scene, for example, mm. of them being down at the coast, and I'll say, well, I don't do landscapes, but I can do something with your scene. So I'll mm. always ask my clients, can I have a favorite piece of music, a favorite piece of poetry, or a favorite book? So I can go and get um, a sense of what they like. Who and who they are, really. Mm. Yeah. And and then I will um, ask them if they have, like, three favourite colours. Mm. And like I say, it's not to match their furniture. It's just to find the essence of yeah. them, really. And um, that is what I'll weave into the piece. I do do a preliminary drawing for them. And but it's very different. A preliminary drawing is very different from the finish. Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. Was, um, but cool. so far, everyone that's had a commission from me has given me the freedom because that's what I need. I can't be mm. restrained at all. I have to have that freedom for them to have something that they recognise as being mine. Because so all those things you mentioned, their favourite piece of music, where they like to go. That really is the essence of them, as you said. And that's a yeah. great title for a painting, isn't it? The essence of them. You know, <laughs> it is because all those things. And I would think the more because we we touched earlier on on how it's the client that completes the story, isn't it? When you buy a piece of art, whatever the art is, you've got your ideas of what that's about, but they buy it and they complete the narrative. And I'm sure with your abstract work that they'll look at it one day and be able to recognise what you meant. And then a few days later, they'll all of a sudden see something else in there. Oh, that relates to the book that I told her I liked. And that relates. Absolutely. Yeah. So it builds and builds and builds over a period of maybe weeks or months when they start looking at different things. Well, like you sort of hope that with your pieces, and I'm sure Cindy's the same, that they will have a lifetime of looking and loving that piece. Mm. Um, yeah. 
Because the thing is, both Cindy and I, we can't paint what our clients have in their head. We can't no, do that. And so that's what we well, have to you could, say to them. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> we, we can only um, incorporate aspects that they've sort of requested, but requesting yeah, yeah, yeah. on a very loose basis. Yeah. Probably a good job, but you wouldn't want to paint what goes on in my head some days. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> just chaos. impossible. Chaos, yeah. yeah. Chaos, and you're almost there, depending <laughs> on what. what um, but, of course, lighting as well has a big effect on paintings. Um, yeah. I know another one of the Blooms, um, was it was it, was it it um, Julie? Julie, who does the encaustic wax. Her paintings look very different in a different light. Mm. The, depending on where the light reflects and i'm sure fiona's it's just the same with both of you isn't it yeah fiona's work too um mm. as well with her gold leaf in particular oh, fiona, yeah she's just started using gold leaf in hers isn't she yeah that mm. that like the the different lighting and the different times of day and everything just make the piece look pieces look so oh. different yeah um, a lot of people don't think about lighting when they're hanging a piece of art they just put it in a corridor maybe and, and wonder yeah. and then one day somebody will turn the light on all of a sudden it, it sort of springs into life and you think wow maybe i do need to have a bit of lighting on that piece yeah yeah it's uh, wow cindy 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 your stuff i just because i love animals we just step on door animals oh that's my phone going oh it's um, there's always one that's you, you, you know you have a do not disturb oh, right Oh, it's, it's Chris Packham. Oh, you like Cindy's art as well. How wonderful. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell you. That's Chris Packham, the, the, um, the naturalist. He said he loves your art as well. I don't know that. How long was Excellent. <laughs> no, I mean, when I first saw your work, I thought, I'm sure LSD was something that was just in the 60s. <laughs> <laughs> because... The colours you use are um, wow. They're they're not what one would expect, are they? Not not always. No, no. I and do which tend way? to enjoy colour. I I love animals, which I think is pretty obvious. Um, yeah, I think you know, so. Yeah, animals love me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, you uh, me. <laughs> so. Uh, you know, I do everything like I volunteer at the local zoo here the whole life, okay? <laughs> Anything to be around animals all the time. Um, so, yeah, they are, of course, the, the one thing that I absolutely love painting all the time. And, like, I will paint them looking natural like um, mm. uh, Jerry here. Good day, Jerry, um, the giraffe. But mm. often as I, after I've sketched them out and that I'll, I'll just be drawn to paint them in a colour that comes to me. It's it's like that's the essence of that particular animal um, that I'm... On a particular day. So if you were to draw two tigers, if you were to paint two tigers on two different days, they could be two different colours. Absolutely. A tiger depends, doesn't always have to be... It depends on the tiger I'm painting a lot too because they're all very individual, just like <laughs> people. God, we could talk about this for hours because I just need to know what, how you get the, what comes to your head to say that's a green gorilla behind you. I mean, it, why? It just, you just feel crazy. it. This you is just, just, you just feel it. Crazy. It's just intuitive. Wow, it's completely intuitive. It just, yeah. And the thing is, they shouldn't work, but they do. <laughs> this is the which is what I, you know, when. Um, the koala, uh, petunia, isn't it? The koala, this. Yeah, I don't even know yeah. the names. <laughs> Big, a pink koala, you just think, yeah, why not? You know, yeah, it's, just, it's just amazing, amazing. So you obviously your inspiration comes from your daily life, isn't it, living in Australia? Where about in Australia, are you? I'm in Melbourne. Melbourne. We, we, yep. oh, which has now been, rechrist been, been christened Lockdown Melbourne. Because it's, I'm sure it has because you know, seriously, in the last year we have been in lockdown. How many times? I think like uh, six. This is our sixth full is lockdown. It? Wow. Um, yeah. You know, we're allowed 5Ks from our house to exercise for an hour a day. Yeah, God, How has that affected you and, well, both of you really in lockdown? I don't Just, know. 
I'm and, sort of used to it now. It's yeah. it's a I don't like there's only a couple of things that it really sort of get under the skin with lockdown for me. One is um not being actually to make physical contact with my friends mm. um and go out to dinner with them because I really miss that. Um and the second one is not being able to celebrate those occasions, you know, that yeah. you want to celebrate anniversaries, you know, birthdays. So many of my friends have had big birthdays this year and you. have not been able to celebrate them at all. It's just, when you can, it'll be one big yeah. many celebration for months on end. Yeah. yeah. But we know how you, Sammy, how the lockdown affected you. You kept your journal. Did mm. you find you were painting more over lockdown, Cindy, or was it struggle sometimes? Uh, I actually struggle more um with lockdown getting anything done which is crazy because i spend a lot of my time at home with my animals in my studio anyway um but when i have to stay home and be in my home all the time big difference it, in it you know it plays it those mind games yeah. with you yeah does um, message you. when you can't go out you want to go out even if you didn't want to go out before but if That's someone tells you can't yeah. go out today, Cindy, yeah. yeah. Looking at the body of work behind you, though, you, you've got such a variety of, of material there. And what yes. do you work in? What materials do you work in? Is it some watercolour, just watercolour? Uh, most, mostly now I pretty much uh, do mostly watercolour. I still do some acrylics. Um, these ones here are all acrylic. Um but yeah, all the rest are all watercolor, and yeah, the new ones that I've been doing recently are all watercolor as well. My one that I'm not quite finished for the show, which will be ready by the time the show comes. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I'm yeah. sorry if I'm asking yeah. that a question because I'm I have no experience before this of of the way that artists work. What determines whether you use a watercolor or acrylic? What makes your mind upon that? Is it the detail you need to put in the way no. that what it to look no no what i feel like on the day all right okay pretty much um nice. good answer <laughs> i like i said i'm using watercolor pretty much all the time now i haven't done any acrylic for a couple of months um i find the watercolor more challenging which is probably oh. why i've been doing that more well watercolor you can't acrylic Acrylic has advantages. Acrylic, you can literally just um, uh, put another layer over the top. So if you do something and you're not happy with how it looks or the shape of it or whatever, you can literally alter it very easily just by putting another layer over the top. You can't do that in watercolour. Ah, uh, right. Watercolour is done in, in um, layering of depth but not, changing like if you put a color that stains down and a lot of colors do stain um you can't do anything about it like you you can make that color deeper but it's not like you can get rid of it uh or, well, acrylic you or, can just paint over it with a yeah a, a, a color. Uh, yeah. Right. So, like i can paint white acrylic over black if i've gone somewhere where i don't want too dark no problem uh, okay. but you can't do that in watercolor at all so watercolor yeah I just yeah, see, I always cool. thought that watercolour water, water, water was an easier way of painting. I don't know why. I don't know why. I thought, oh, oils and acrylic sounds. I don't think so. No, no. From what you just said, definitely not. No. But, uh, but it's a lot of fun. Amazing. <laughs> amazing stuff. This is the voice. This is the voice from admin. The voice of doom. <laughs> Hi, Steph. Hiya. Hiya. Just, we've, had, we've got six people um, chattering away on Facebook saying hi and everything, so I thought it was worth me coming on and just telling you. Cool. So um, we've got the uh, Blooms girls on all saying how fabulous and hi to Henry. And also um, we I, I think Shell is um, one of yep. your collectors or friends. Hi, Shell. Yeah, she's saying hello to Henry show. and everybody else. Yeah, Shell Lang. Um, but yeah, we've got Mac, we've got Fiona and Julie and Lisa. Um, hello. Yeah. <laughs> All saying hello and how fabulous, obviously, that your art is. Yeah. Um, I am going to fire a question to Cindy because you've put a new offering on your website. And this, it thrills me that you do this. 
and you, I want you to tell us about it because you help people connect, don't you, with their soul? Do and, right? Tell us, tell us, tell us. It's exciting. I, it makes me excited. Like the minute you started talking about it, I got all jittery. Um, I recently trained this year um, to get certified in uh, doing Akashic Record readings um, so that I can do Akashic Record healings for people. And the way I've chosen to go forward with that is um, apart from just offering those uh, healing sessions, I actually am offering sessions where I will take um, somebody on a journey to connect with their spirit animal um, and then do a painting of their spirit animal after the session. So it's really exciting and fun and yeah, <laughs> it makes me really giddy inside thinking about it. <laughs> basically, it's fantastic. No, you light up when you talk about it. Mm. Yeah, like I said it, I get really excited <laughs> when uh, just thinking about it gets me excited. So, yeah. so it's some people yeah. won't know what the Akashic records are, and I think Steve's one of those. Yeah, I'm just. I'm just <laughs> It fits so well with what you do, with, with those animals around you. When you said that, it's almost as though they were all agreeing with you behind you. It's they just... do. They do. Trust me. They believe. And they do. Yes. Um, so the Akashic Records is um, basically uh, every human uh, uh, soul uh, is a soul within a being. This is my beliefs. Um uh, every human is a soul within a being and uh, we have an uh, energy record of all of our past lives, our future lives, everything that has happened to us, uh, everything that we have done and everything. Um, and all of that information is recorded energetically in the Akashic Records. So you can actually go to the Akashic Records and, like, review your records. So you can review your past lives. You can review your future. You can review all sorts of things. Um, and it's a great way um, for people to gain healing that are having any issues or problems um, and things in their present being um, because they're, I don't know, give an example um <laughs> one good example um the one animal that i am absolutely terrified of is snakes i am absolutely terrified of snakes i am actually a lot better now than i was um i used to just see a, a photograph of a snake and i would start to freak out that's how how distressing they were to me um people used to make fun of me so bad and like friends like my friend michelle will tell funny stories about things that have happened when a tiny little snake was near us and all sorts of things harmless tiny little snake but i still freaked out um and uh what i've been able to uh discover since learning how to uh read akashic records and so on is that uh in a past life, I had a very traumatic incident involving snakes. Oh. And hence why in this life, even though I haven't really had, or I have had a couple of incidents now at, at my age, but when I was younger, I was still paranoid, like completely frightened of snakes for no reason whatsoever. Like I had never come across a real snake or anything, but I was petrified. And this is... You know, I've been able to learn that it's from a previous lifetime and a and a, a trauma that had carried across. And, like, there are so many things like that in people's lives now um, that can be aided with, yeah, Akashic Records healing sessions and um, things like that. And then on the flip side of that, because, as we know, I absolutely love animals and I'm just, yeah, animal crazy, um, uh i can use the same uh tools that i've learned to guide people to meet their spirit animal 
their power animals because we have a whole team. It's not just necessarily one spirit animal that people have. Like, and often the spirit animal can change over your lifetime as well. So, like, you know, what your spirit animal was when you were 20 might not necessarily be the same spirit animal that you have today. Um, and things like that. So I can, yeah, help guide you and you can meet your spirit animal and connect you and yeah. Because they are there anyway. It's just a lot of people are not aware of them. Love that. Love that. I think that's why a lot of people seem to be drawn to particular animals, maybe. Mm. They yes. really love, I don't know, cats or dogs or sloths or whatever. Maybe that's that's the connection. They don't realise it. Yeah. Yep. There's a, all those sorts of things. Which, again, what you mentioned about the snakes would also explain why a lot of people grow up with this inane fear of this inane fear of spiders. Yep. And exactly. Yep. Yep, all those sorts of things. And there's there's the same, like, uh, there's, uh, I personally haven't worked with anybody, but there's um, people that uh, I've been told about that have had really innate fear of water mm. and, um, you know, uh, couldn't learn to swim or anything like that. And, like, one particular case that I was told about um, in a previous life, um, her and her young toddler child um, were drowned in a tsunami. Oh, right. And um, this oh, was the basis of the fear. And the, the thing is, once the fear is brought to the, the forefront, then you can address it. It's not mm. such a big deal. Like, like I said, I used to be afraid of, like, even a photograph of snakes. Whereas now I can see snakes and everything. I'm not going to go touch one or anything yet. I'm not quite that far. <laughs> but I don't have that same, like, why does a sheet freak really? out reaction that I used to have. Um, so, yeah, there's all will of that. We a, will we see a snake on a canvas with you anytime soon? <laughs> um, I probably won't do one um, unless somebody asks like commissions one um because i don't think they're ever going to be my favorite animal <laughs> that, would, that would be a real test for you yeah but uh, yeah um no. but i could do it if it was um commissioned no problem now whereas once upon a time i could not you couldn't have done that before could you yeah that's right absolutely not no. so, amazing so what have you got installed for the blooms next week then for the bloom um, show I have a few. I have a couple of new pieces that will definitely be finished and ready. Um, you know, hopefully more, but who knows? It just depends how it goes. Nope. No. Nope. Nope. Going to be a big surprise for all those coming. Yep. Come along, but folks. Keep it under my hat. Yep. <laughs> have, you got all those old, have you got all those old frames to burn in your Barbie on the uh, on the the nights? <laughs> we always joke that Cindy has a Barbie in her studio with all because all. Oh. She has Aussie such a big party. Oh, they do it. In her room. I am putting out the word to all the Aussies watching, Saturday night, 7 p.m., make sure you've got – get yourself in there. I want to have, since it's our first anniversary, I want to have the biggest get-together in my studio that night. Mm. So come on, Aussies, let's do it. <laughs> There's no problem there because you know you'd go. Us <laughs> would go to the opening of an envelope, I think, wouldn't they? Yeah. <laughs> as long as there's a Foster's there, as long as there's a Foster's there, and a bit of a bit of beef on the barbie, yeah, yeah, no, brilliant, so brilliant. Steve, hmm. after a whole year of you badgering us, yes, to let you have your own room. I haven't badgered I, any. Um, I've, 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 I've got a stack of letters that you've sent to me, written in crayon, <laughs> saying, please let me come in. Crayon. Um, so what will you be showing in your room? Well, yes. I've, I feel a bit of a fraud, really, because I'm not really um, on the same scale as some of you guys, you know, because you, you just amaze me with your art. But my art is obviously very different, and I didn't start calling myself an artist until until probably just over 12 months ago um, during the first period of lockdown when lockdown was very strange because I was making lamps before then but not really um, thinking of it as being something that I would do carrying on and really build and build 
And it was only when we couldn't do shows. It started, let me take you back to when it started. It started when Steph, my partner Steph, who you just heard on the um, on the uh, the voice of God there, um, she is a fibre sculpture, a, a brilliant fibre sculpture. And she, she was doing shows and uh, wanted some lighting on her stand. So I made a couple of book lamps just because it was a bit of an interesting light rather than put up just spotlights. And at the end of the show, somebody said, oh, can I buy the book lamps? So I thought, oh, great, you know, fine. And I started to think, well, I quite enjoyed making them. So I then looked around to see what other ways of making lamps, because I really got into the, the idea of doing it. And I came upon the fact that, um, yes, I could get old vintage items and upcycle and repurpose, which I do, old telephone bell boxes, blow torches, things like that. Um, but then I wanted to do something a bit different. And I found the galvanized pipe fittings, the iron galvanized pipe fittings that I remember from my granddad's shed. He used to have a, a box he pulled out. And there's all these old pipe fittings you know, I used to play with when I was little. And... Um, I thought, well, you can still get them. And the reason you can still get them in the UK is because, and in other countries, but a lot of countries um, don't use them, but we use them over here specifically because we have English Heritage, National Trust, um, listed buildings, and all those, when they do any work on the water mains or gas mains, they have to use the original pipework. They can't replace it with copper or push fit plastic. So the pipe fittings are available. And but very few people seem to be doing what I call um, character lamps in this country. So I started to do a few using quite big pipe fittings, three quarter inch pipe fittings. And my first lamps were, were quite large and I was pretty pleased with them. Yeah, you, you are when you do a first of anything. I'm sure the first paintings you, you girls did were, were you were really proud of it. I was proud of my first lamps. And gradually, um, I was sort of refining them, but nothing too um, detailed until lockdown. And in lockdown, when we couldn't go and do the shows around the country, we decided to clear our kitchen out here and set up our stand. And whenever we were going to do, we should have been doing a show around the country, we would do a, a live show in our kitchen. And from then, I started to develop my lamps and they got more and more detailed, more and more, because I'm a bit of a pedant, um, uh, from for all, I'm a, I'm a publisher by trade now, although I'm a horticulturalist years ago. But publisher, so the English language is what I do on a daily basis, and picking out grammatical errors in people's work and everything. Um, but that's transposed over into what I do in my art. Is that now um, I spend hours trying to get the leg of a lamp. If it's the cat behind me here, you see the cat there, um, to get those legs looking like a cat took me ages and somebody would say well it looks okay leave it but the, the, there's no it'll do in my dictionary you know it'll do just doesn't um so my lamps have got more and more detailed over the last 12 months really and then I started um you put you put you put you probably don't know but I do commissions for people um I um <laughs> what are you laughing at <laughs> It's a, stand, it's a standing joke, this, because it's a standing joke, because at shows, because now I don't share a stand with Steph at a show. You've never mentioned that before. Have I not? <laughs> well, 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 I must start talking about it. Basically, at shows now, we, um, I used to be a cuckoo in Steph's nest and um, sort of have a little bit of her stand, and I kept sort of getting more and more lamps onto the stand, and... In the end, I think she was happy when I said, look, should we have two stands? Yes, you have two bloody stands. Have your own stand. So we're side by side at the show. I've got my wacky lamp stand with this backdrop behind me. And it, 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 it looks great because we sort of share the stand, but we've got our own little space. And that gave me the freedom then to start building lamps um, that were a bit more um, specialised because I knew I'd have room to display them. And... Um, when I have a conversation, because I get quite chatty with the people that come on the stand, as you can imagine, and um, I have to watch out the corner of my eye where Steph is. If she's talking to anybody, that's fine, because if she's not talking to somebody, if she's stabbing away doing her needle felting, and I'm talking to a potential customer, and I say the words, oh, by the way, I do commissions, she will turn around and go, like that. <laughs> and I just have to, I just, it just cracks me up. So um, it's, it's, it's become a standing joke. But basically, yes, I do commissions. And that is important because 
Um, the lamps that I have on display just gives a flavor uh, at shows of what I can do. Very few people seem to want to buy that particular lamp, but they can see the potential. They say, well, my husband's into cricket. I see you've got a footballer lamp there. Could you do a cricketer um, if I send you a picture of him playing cricket when he was 20 or 30? And I will take that photograph and I will try and make a lamp to match that photograph. And it could be that it's a particular stance that they were in. And I'm only dealing with three angles, straight, 90 degrees, 45 degrees. So I'm going to try and get those pipe fittings to make um, into that looking like a character. And it's become it's become such a joy for me now doing it because I, I found that um, pretty well everything is, is possible um, if you put your mind to it. I've done three Muhammad Ali lamps because he was my sporting hero. And his three most famous fights against um, Sonny Liston, George Foreman and Joe Frazier. Um, I've done a lamp to represent each of those three fights, the punch that took the opponent down. And I got that a little perspex frame that the customer will get with the lamp. So they can see the photograph that the lamp is based on, uh, the yeah, the photograph that the lamp is based on. And I, I can only do that now that I'm pretty confident that I can match it up because that's a big... Mm -hmm. That's a big statement to make. Well, here's the photograph and here's the lamp. And someone said, well, it's booger all like it, you know. But now it does, you know, that I'm pretty confident. So, yeah. So I'm, I'm really enjoying it now. I say it's come as a complete surprise, the reaction that I get to them, because um, it's just I have the joy. If, for, for me, OK, I mean, this is going to sound pretentious, but it's not about the selling. It is in a way, isn't it? It always is. But it's the joy I get from doing them and people you know, saying, wow, and a lot of them are touch sensor. So you can touch this one here is my, um, it's called Together Forever. People have bought this for weddings and um, anniversaries and that. And it's a touch sensor lamp. So you just touch anywhere on the lamp and it, you get three levels of brightness. And that's that's some something that I've moved on to now. So I can incorporate that into most of my lamps. So, yeah, it's just, just, Great, the how it's all developed, and I think, um, I think um, with all our work, the joy that we have in creating—that's what our collectors then see. They they can actually right. physically see that, mm. whether it's in a sculpture, whether it's in a painting, they can actually see that joy within that piece of artwork. And I know that you did, Steve. Um, you've done a couple of musicians. Four musicians yes and they've been completely over the moon with those I pieces did, yeah. because you, you you like um cindy have been able to capture the essence of that musician yeah and i don't know how it i don't i mean like you don't know how you could do your colors cindy i don't know how i get from a piece a pile of pipes to angus young from acdc with his little schoolboy cap on hopping along with his um, Gibson SG guitar, you know, I've got that photograph that I was given and I made the lamp to match, you know, obviously Steph made the little cloth cap, his little schoolboy cap, but it did actually look like him. Mm. And someone said, how do you do that? And I thought, well, I don't really know. I'm it's sat in my workshop. Yeah, in, in, I suppose it is in, intuitive. I'm sat in the workshop. I've always got music on of some sort or a podcast on or an audio book. Um, and it just seems to come. And I get an idea, and I don't know if it's telling me, do you, when you get an idea, you have to do something about it straight away. Yeah. If I, I have to go out down to the workshop and just, I'll go down just to do something else, and I'll think, I'll oh, just get that pipe fitting out the box there. Mm. Just mm. Before I know it, I've assembled mm. something. And Steph knows what I'm doing. She doesn't come and bother me and say, well, you're only going to be five minutes. You know, been down there three and a half, bloody hours. But it doesn't matter because I, at that moment, I had to do it because I, I did suggest to Steph that after three days, she ought to check that you're still breathing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she just kicked me like she normally does. And if I go, ouch, she knows that I'm still breathing. That's basic. But, but with your ideas, I don't know if you guys are the same. I've actually got a notebook by the side of my bed. And like at two, three, four o'clock in the morning, I'll wake up and I'll start writing. And then I'll go back to sleep. And then when I properly wake up in the morning, I'll look and think, well, what was that about? And then it'll suddenly <laughs> tip into place. Yeah. 
I mean, my memory is not so good as it used to be. So I, I, I happen to, I always use the notes app on the iPhone and I'll do something. And then you say, you look back at it and you think, what was that about? I don't remember writing that. And then oh, all of a sudden it'll click. Yeah. yeah. Because at the last show that we did, somebody said, I mean, people always say, oh, what you should make is so-and-so lamp. And you think, yeah, that's, yeah, whatever. But somebody, two or three people said to me that they would have bought a lamp of, someone sat with a game console for their sons oh, or daughters. Yeah. And I thought, yeah, so I've got, I haven't got them here. I managed to find on um, eBay some little like two inch um, game console um, handsets oh, wow. that bleep, oh, okay. just the perfect size to make a lamp around. So with someone sat forward, you know, yeah. looking intense with the bulb for the head again. So I might do that for the next show uh, at the end of October. Um, so yeah, you get inspiration from things around you. What I'm going to launch, I'm doing a Black Lives Matter lamp as well, which um, would be going to be nice to have on the stand at the show uh, because I think that people would have bought that. That was talked about at the last show we did. It depends on what's in vogue at the moment, what's going on in the world. Um, but you're right, um, Sammy, musicians, I did... Um, I mentioned Angus Young. I did, there's a lady that contacted me from Texas and her husband is in Texas. He's quite a famous country singer called Michael Dooley. And she'd ordered a guitar lamp off somebody on the American equivalent of Etsy, or whatever, and it never arrived and the company didn't exist. It was a scam. So he'd paid this money and she happened to see my Instagram and got in touch and said, is there any way you can do me a guitar lamp? for Michael for his anniversary or whatever it was, his big birthday, I think. And I said, well, send me a, a you know, photograph of him. And a photograph of him sat on his stool on stage with his guitar resting on his knee and his hand in the air like this, you know. And so I, I managed to do that pose, which she wasn't expecting. And on the guitar strap, I um, impressed his name on the leather of the guitar strap. So little things like that. It's, it's always nice to under promise and over deliver sometimes, I think. Absolutely. With, yeah, but no, I get great fun out of it, and I can't wait to uh, to see people on next weekend because I'll be in reception as well. So um, um, I've been double booked, as it were. But yeah, well, I'll have my room with my show reel running, uh, so people can go into the my room at the show as they can with yours and talk to you too, see your show reel, chat to you. Uh, they'll have to come out back out into reception and chat to me, but um, I'm sure that uh, they can come and talk to me. Back. I think it's just going to be such a fabulous show. Our first year anniversary <clears throat> is really something to celebrate, considering yeah. how us as a group got together through yep. through the lockdown. Because we, that's what was amazing. I know, mean, I've, I've always watched it watched it grow from you meeting on an online sell your art online course yeah. to now being um, a real force to be reckoned with. Um, Absolutely. Producer. And yep. also being able to show people your art in your own studios, live around the world. I don't know of any other online art show that does that. I have no. never, in, in all my 53 years, I have never felt such a connection with such a fabulous group mm -hmm. of artists to be actually say, um, happy birthday you're my friend you know and 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 it is that closeness and we yeah. are a we are a collective and we are a support network as artists for each other but over this year i can say you know as friends you know we are that that's yeah. that's what we started as as yeah. a collective to bounce ideas off that to be able to speak to someone because we all work solo in yeah. our studios and so it's so lovely that we've been able to come together. And I just hope lots of people come along to um, our anniversary event because it's going to be really good. And it's the gonna... after show party on Saturday night, I'm very much looking forward to. Yes. What was lovely I saw there was, um, I think it was one of Julia's friends put a little video testimonial recently, which sort of spoke volumes for the fact that she came along being complete technophobe, um, never been on Zoom before, didn't know what to expect. 
She'd heard that somebody had stayed for three hours and thought, that's not going to happen. No, I'm going to have a quick look. And she stayed for three hours as well and was amazed at how easy it was to travel from room to room. Mm. And she said it felt like she was in Australia. She was in Canada. She was in Italy. She was, you know, she was actually there in the studio talking to the artist. How many times can you visit an art gallery when there's an exhibition on and the artist is there and you can't really get the same feel? Not when you've got your paints around you, your, mm. your canvases around you, you're maybe up half, halfway through a piece of work and you've got one-to-one -one chatting with that artist in their studio. You don't get that anywhere else. No. I mean, even when you go to preview nights and the artist is mm. there, all you get is a quick, hi, really love your work, and then you're shoved, shoved along so the next person can come along. Exactly. This way, you actually get to discuss the work, but if you don't want to discuss it, that's fine. Just watch the show wheel. Just that's enjoy right. the event. It's like going to a gallery and going into different areas of that gallery, but you've got that personal touch with the artist actually being there, which is lovely. And it's yeah. without the pretension and without the warm Prosecco and that smelly cheese, you get little bits of cheese on sticks. Yeah. My Prosecco will be ice cold, but <laughs> I can't share it. So it's a BYO. BYO, yes. <laughs> Definitely BYO. So the yeah. times again, let's just go over the times again, because uh, I have to remind myself, it's 10 a.m. on Friday the 24th. No, it's no. not. 7 no. p.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. on Friday the 24th, 10 a.m. and 7 p.m. on Saturday the 25th. And that is GMT plus one. That is UK yeah. time. And I know we say this and people don't think about it. You will spend longer there than you think. Hmm. You, it's no good thinking, oh, I just nip into the Bloom show for half an hour because you'll, A, won't get to see more than maybe one or two artists, and B, you'll be disappointed, especially if it's the last show of the weekend. So allow yeah. yourselves, if you're listening to this thinking, oh, I might pop along to them, uh, go on to thebloomers.co.uk. There's a place there where you can hit, and it says tickets. It couldn't be simpler to book your tickets. And they are the huge price of zero, uh, but you have to register, because otherwise you don't get your link to join. And you will see the th Sorry, uh, go on, Cindy. No, no, I was just saying that's right. Yeah, people need to understand the tickets are, are free, but they do need to register so that they can get sent that link to join us um, during the show, show hours. Um, and and I would like to just point out that for Aussies, for all the Aussies, you can either come 4 a.m. Saturday morning, <laughs> 7 p.m. Saturday night, or 4 a.m. Sunday morning. So... Yeah. I hope to see you all 7 p.m. Saturday night. <laughs> the times don't, don't, don't mention for us is that, 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 yeah, they don't time. One thing I must say, which was hilarious, was the first Bloom show we did, uh, being in reception, people come in and they put their videos on and um, I say hello to them. And I can remember the video came up on the screen and there was it was looking up at this big bearded trucker who was... Hello there. Can you put me into Cindy's room, please? <laughs> and it was your husband, wasn't it? It was. <laughs> and it, it was, was brilliant. It was so whether you're chucking across Queensland in a, a big 18 yep. wheeler, whether you're, whether you're in bed and don't want to put your video on, or want to put your video on, it's up to you. You know, we're not going <laughs> to. You can be, you don't, you don't have to put your video on as long as you can chat to us. Um, or you could be making the tea, you could be sat with your feet up, you could be doing anything. But what you want to do is to log on to the blooms.co.uk, book your tickets, get that link, and then tell your friends, even if it's the last minute and you've been in for half an hour, just text your friends and say, you want to come to this show? It's fantastic. That's There's it. no other show like it no, at all. There's not. And there won't be. There won't be because there's no other group like the Blooms. Exactly. No. And I am thrilled to be an invited guest for this one. <laughs> if I plan my cards right, I might get invited back in the future. Who knows? If you're a good boy. Yeah, I was going to say, as long as you behave yourself. <laughs> I might be invited back then. Oh, it's been great. Thank you, good girls. I loved it this morning. Thank you. Well, th this evening for you, Cindy. Thank you very much for letting me hop onto your conversation this morning and have a bit of a chin wag with you both. No worries. Thanks for joining us. Good. <laughs> Oh, I think we will all say goodbye. So it's good night. Good night from him and it's good night from me. So bye bye. Bye. see you next bye. week at the Bloom bye. Show. Bye. bye.